Greetings friends, it's Alexor again. I wanted to make a quick video on getting you up to speed and how to start with this game, Path of Exile, if you're a complete noob, if you know nothing about the game, okay? It's very simple. First of all, highly recommend to not start with the Witch, okay? This is not a good class to start with because you have to learn how to kite in this game. She dies fast, not very tanky, the skills are very dependent on things, so don't use this class, okay? If you want to have a castle style like I do, you go with the Templar, which is a strength in character. He just has more health, but he also does a lot of spells and casting spells and this kind of stuff. If you want the warrior type, you go with the Marauder. I wouldn't actually recommend using a build guide the first time you play through the game. I would recommend the game has 10 acts, right? Two parts and 10 acts. You play through the campaign yourself and figure things out yourself along the path. Okay, very simple. Because then you actually learn what the game does. How it handles things, how it works. Simple, okay? That, that's, I think, is the best way to go. It's, the game is entirely free, so it just there's nothing to lose, you just go at it. Very simple. Now, a key thing that confuses most people, if you actually go to our stash tab over here, or to our stash, rather, is that you have all these currency things, right? You have all these orbs and all this... This is too much for many people. You don't need this. Okay, this is endgame stuff. Okay, if you really want to maximize your items, if you want to make them do exactly what you want them to do, etc., you don't need this. There are really only two things I usually have in my in my inventory when I'm out farming is the portal scroll. Because unlike in other games, you cannot always portal, you have to use these, but you have enough of these, so it's not really a problem. Um, and the scroll of wisdom. You see, because if you pick up an item, like this one, for example, it says unidentified on it. That means you need to right click on the scroll of wisdom and then left click on this item. And now it's identified. That means now we know the affixes it actually has. Okay. You will have to do this every time. I personally don't know why this mechanic is in the game, because it seems like an unnecessary extra step, but it always has been in the game. So maybe there's a reason for it. That's just how it is. Okay. You always have to identify these first with the scroll of wisdom to even see what it has. Okay. Rarities are pretty much the same. You have gray ones. I don't have one here, I don't think. Um, you have gray ones and you have blue ones. Then the yellow ones and then, of course, the uniques, the orange. And then there is stuff above that, but that's too complicated. You don't get these anyway if you just play through the campaign. Not necessary. This comes all later. Way, way later. Just know you don't need most of these. You just find them, you put them in your stash, all good. It's all irrelevant. Everything else is pretty much the same as always. You have a body armor, your helmet, and your, your weapon, and rings and stuff, and the flask. Very simple. One key thing, though, is the skills in this game are not chosen in some sort of skill tree. You get gems, right? These are these, for example. Each one of these gems is a skill you can use, or is a support for a skill. For example, in here, I have the frost blink, which is a, a blink, obviously, like a traversal skill. It does cold damage and I put this in here and you can tell it's now not in my bar anymore if I put it back like it was here on the right click if I put it back in boom there it is again now I can use it see that's my blink and if I remove it out of the item then it's gone again this is what confuses a lot of people but actually putting skill gems in the items is how you actually build your skills yeah, very simple. Um, you see these have a lot of... Uh, you don't need to actually fill all of them. And I wouldn't even recommend this. Even though you can have more than this. If you hit control, you can also go into the second row of this. Um, where you have five more. You don't need all these skills, okay? This build, for example, only uses one skill. That is the meteor. No, it's called Firestorm. The meteor raining down does ignite damage. And the blink, everything else is auras. You see these circling things? These are auras. And this is auto-cast by taking damage, etc. Advanced stuff, you don't need it. There's no point in having 15 different skills because most likely you can't use them anyway. So what is happening here is we have support skills, right? For example, this one, flame ability. Um, this cursor targets in the area and giving them a chance to be ignited when hit or like heightening the chance to be ignited, which is the idea of this build. I have this linked through these things here. These means they are linked. That means this support skill Support gem, I can take it out again, it's a gem like the other ones. Now supports this one and this one. Everything that is linked, okay? Meaning the frost blink now gets a flame ability. 
Meaning when I blink on people, they are more likely to take uh, to be ignited and take damage over time and fire. Okay? So this is what these linking things do. There's no point in linking Frost Blink and Firestorm together because these are just two skills that do things. You want to always link a skill and support gems. There's many of them. You find them, but you can also buy them. And for example, Lily, or earlier in the game, I forgot her name, but you get to purchase items and then she has all the gems. And see, there is a ton of them, as you can tell. And uh, the colors are very simple. Red is usually strength, green is dex, and blue is int. So this also depends on the colors of your sockets, obviously, right? But you can tell it's not actually that difficult. You just want to have one base skill that does something and then you use support skills. And usually it says also support at the top, right? Right at the top there it says Hex Touch Support. Flammability doesn't say that because it's actually also a... This is a little bit of a bad example because it is a skill that can be cast. But we do it because this one is auto-casted. So there's also things that automates these. Or this one here, where is it? Um, frost Shield here. Damage, when damage taken support, right? That means this gem... When we take damage, which says 1600 or something, we take a, a number of damage, then it auto casts the spell that is in support. In this case, the frost shield, or like in this that is linked here. So this gem auto casts the frost shield when we take a certain amount of damage. Okay. So understand this: these are usually a combination of skills and supporting skills that just buff the existing skill. And you also see this at the bottom; they have these these letters on it, like S, B, I, A, U and stuff, that just tells you that they are being enhanced through the other supports, gems. It's actually not that, not that difficult. You also see sometimes, now these are all linked, they can come unlinked, so there are just random sockets in there. Um, that can also happen. There are orbs again in your stash, or like in... There's some orbs, I don't know which one it was again, I think it was this one. Orb of Fusing, yeah. Reforges the links between sockets on an item. If you use this on an item, you can add links to these sockets that are there, okay? That's pretty much it for that already. This is really it for the items. You don't really need more than that in the beginning. Everything else is super advanced later and you can do stuff with that. You don't need that. Now for the passive tree, I know this looks overwhelming as fuck. I know, this is a huge, massive passive tree Perfect now has, right? Just all the work that went into this, right? It's kind of crazy, but it's been 10 years. But it's actually not as difficult as you might think it is because, for example, I'm having the witch and you look at these huge, huge, huge blobs over here, these ones. These are all the different classes. And this is the witch, over here is, for example, the Templar, and this is Scion. So, you kind of want to stay mostly roughly in the area of your character, right? This is actually the tree then. It still is big, but not as huge as this one, right? If you are playing the Templar, you can tell by this line, right? This line sort of... Or these lines, rather. These are going through here. These sort of cut off the characters. Now, as you can tell, I went... I deviated from this because the Witch is a bad example. If you're starting, as I said, don't play the Witch. But this was my mistake, one of my biggest mistakes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, stay sort of in your range and there is you, you're not running into issues. There's another thing if we so this is pretty much about the passive tree, it's very simple. You you just put in your points and your apply points. You can only refund points if you have these orbs, you will find them along the way. Actually, not true. When the leak starts, you can do this with gold. But right now you can do it with, with the orbs. Once the leak starts, you can do it with gold. So it doesn't really matter. Um one thing if you go to if you hit C on your keyboard, and you can see, no, I can't see this now because I'm in the way. If you hit C on your keyboard, this is where you see your character stuff, and it also tells you when you hover over here, intelligence gives you mana and 1% energy shield. That's the shield, this blue thing. It's like Ward in Last Epoch. On top of that, um, this one gives you strength, and this is one life, and merely physical damage. And Dex gives you evasion and accuracy. Accuracy you need, obviously, for your bows and stuff. And if you go here, you can also see in defense, you can see resistances, right? Resistances. Initially, again, it's not really important, but later it becomes so. If these these are kept at 75, I believe. Um, 70, 75. So if you can get these up later through the game, 
this is good, this is your survivability. With the Templar or the Marauder, you don't need this as much, especially because Melee also got buffed in this season, but it's still good to know. What you definitely also want to do is you go to the options, right? You escape and options, then you go to UI, and you want to set up a lot of things here. You have to sh corner map, but you also want to have um, items always show sockets, so you know them. Full descriptions, that's fine. And then mana levels, right? And flask buffs, you want to have this here, up here, aura icons. So you, you, this is where you get the information what you actually have. So you want to set this all up. Life bars on allies, enemies above you, resistance icons, always highlight. That means these things are always here. Like if I remove this, these are gone, right? And the cursor, of course, over here. You can choose also a green one. But then like the pink is sort of dead. So you can actually see where the cursor is when shit is going down. So you want to set this up once and then you're good. If you hit U, that's always your map. That's the world map where you can teleport to things. One key thing that's different is you always have to use your teleport. You cannot just, or like waypoints, you either have to use a teleport, which you have in, which is your items and your inventory, or use a waypoint. These are the blue things. We can actually go here to teleport, for example, to Lion Eyes Watch. It's one of the first um, sort of encampments you land. These are the waypoints. If you click on them, then you can teleport along these things. These that have the blue bubble in them you they actually have a waypoint the other ones don't or you didn't find it yet it, another key thing i would highly recommend is that you ignore all this shit on the side right these are these mechanics that are in the game that you sort of unlock like the forbidden sanctum the mining encampment the menagerie or even the desperate plaza you kind of need i'm gonna go over this over this in a second but the other things you can mostly ignore there's also way more things than just that um, extra mechanics that are in the game. If you want, you can go into them, look into them a little bit, how they play, what they do. But in most cases, it's kind of irrelevant to even do that. Or necessary, so you can can ignore that mostly. One key thing I mentioned, though, is the Aspirin's Plaza. That is the Labyrinth, because these are ascendancies. So like, this is the Elementalist I chose here. You don't start with this, right? You just start as a regular witch in this case, and you put your points in. But... You can choose an ascendancy when you go through the labyrinths, through the labs. And these have insane extra buffs. Right? For example, this hits always ignite. All damage can ignite. That's very strong. So there's crazy stuff these have, and all, each class has this. But you unlock these through the plaza. Right? That's the... I actually need to go to the waypoint again. I'm so used to doing this in Last Epoch, where you just can teleport at any given time. So this is the Aspirant's Plaza, you unlock this later in the Sound Encampment. So it comes in the campaign. Again, it's badly explained throughout the campaign, if at all. Oh, wait, I don't want to listen to this guy, who cares? Yeah, shut up. Labyrinth Activation Device, that's it. So you have to unlock these whenever you come across... Um, it says, it actually says in the campaign, when you enter in a, a zone and it says there is an Ascendancy Trial in this area, you, you want to do this. This is with all the traps on the ground that kill you fast, right? You have to go through this and unlock this bronze inscription thingy at the end. Then you get these bubbles. Actually says here where, they were, where these were. Act 1, lower prison. Crypt level 1, Act 2. Chamber of Sins level 2. This is where you find them. Once you have these completed, you can run this labyrinth where you have to fight the Emperor. Going through this labyrinth. And at the end, you can choose your Ascendancy or get Ascendancy points. Which are these, okay? And I only say this, I know this is a little bit complicated, you will figure this out yourself later. I know I only really mention this because these are very important to make your build good, especially the further you go into the campaign or late game. Okay. So I know it's maybe a little bit too much initially, but this is how you how you do it. Everything else is pretty much like in any other RPG, it's a point and click. You cast your spells, you attack, you kill the enemies, you pick up your items. Now, you can use a loot filter. I wouldn't recommend doing it initially because it's a little bit of a complicated effort to do this. We don't need it. This is sort of the base game to get into it. Everything else you will figure out along the way yourself or, which is of course even better, you watch your favorite streamer, which might not be me. It's fine, right? You can just watch other people. It's totally fine. Um, and ask in chat because the community is very, very great very open to welcoming new people into the game because they just know how great this game is 
and they welcome you and they want to help you as much as they can. So just ask in chat, either the streamer will tell you or the, the other people in chat will tell you how things work. Just ask away. There's many things, there's also I'm sure a hundred million YouTubers that do guides for this game, so just ask. Okay, just ask. Very, very simple. Again, the game is actually not that difficult. If you know these base things, difficulty really comes in the end game when you go to maps and how to do these and updating them, making them better and all the other things with the divination cards. There's a lot. There's really there's so much in this game. It's actually kind of crazy how much you can do. You never run out of stuff to do in this game, which I think is great. Um, but anyway, I hope this helped to sort of understand a little bit of the base game, how it works. And I wish to see you in the new season because it looks really great. And this game is a lot of fun. If you like RPGs, this game is great. Definitely check it out. And I will see you in the new season. Have fun with it. But you can also try right away. Just test how the game goes. And I will see you then. Have a good time, gentlemen. And goodbye.